Hi guys, I'm Erin McDowell and I'm coming to you today from my home in New Jersey where I'm going to show you how to make a uh, pie crust. And I'm actually today talking about mixing pie crust. I get more questions about making pie crust than almost anything else. And so today I want to show you in real time how I do it. And I'm also going to show you some not right ways to do it so that you can kind of see them all right next to each other. So I want to point out that this video is completely unedited. We're doing this in real time. So I hope you guys are with me and let's get going. So uh, when we start off, I've got um, 151 grams or one and a quarter cup of all purpose flour. And I've got a little pinch of salt in there. That's all that's in here. I don't put any sugar in my pie dough. Um, and I don't think it really needs it. The filling is sweet. You can let the rest of it um, just be flaky and delicious. And then I've got 113 grams or one stick of unsalted butter. Um, you can use salted butter. Uh, people ask me that quite a bit, but uh, it's hard unless you're really familiar with your brand of butter to know how it is salted. So I always use unsalted butter when I'm baking and that way I can just add salt to the final recipe as uh, as needed. This is um, a bench knife, and that's what I usually use to cut my butter into cubes. Of course, if you don't have this, you can just use a paring knife or any kind of knife that you have. Um, since I'm working with a stick of butter, I always cut it in half horizontally, and you can come overhead if you think that would give you a good view too, and then in half the other way. So now I've got four little pieces of the butter, and now I'm just gonna eyeball cutting it into about half inch cubes and um, you can double this recipe easily to make a double crust pie this is my recipe for a single crust pie dough and I will be posting it on my website for those of you who don't already have it and even if you're not using this recipe Exactly, you can 100% follow these same techniques with your favorite pie dough recipe. So you don't have, if you've got um, a recipe that works great for you, don't go switching, you don't need to. You can uh, just follow these same techniques and apply them to your favorite recipe. So now what I'm doing is I'm adding the cubes of butter into the flour and I'm adding a few at a time and then tossing them to make sure that they're all coated evenly with flour. And um, this is like one of those little extra steps that it isn't totally necessary, but it starts the process off right. And that's what we want to do is we want to start doing everything right from the beginning. So once I have got it all tossed, then I'm going to start cutting in the butter into the flour. And I do this one of two ways, um, depending on how I'm feeling. The first is to just in between my fingertips, squeeze the butter to make it into a flatter layer. Um, I also personally enjoy doing this in the heels of my hand, like this. You'll see that that gives kind of more of an evenly shingled, whereas this, just crushing it between your fingers, you know, it's a little bit less evenly flat. And so if you want to get a lot of surface area, you can do what I do and do it um, with the heels of your hands, but either way is fine. And um, a lot of recipes uh, give instructions also for mixing pie dough in uh, the food processor. This is really great advice, especially if you are somebody who tends to overwork your dough, meaning you're never quite sure if it's done, you're never quite sure if it's totally mixed, so you just keep mixing, keep mixing. Or the biggest thing is if you have hot hands, which is not something you might not necessarily know about yourself if you are not an avid pastry baker, but for example, I have pretty cold hands, and so it's easier for me to do this by hand because I can just control the whole process much better. So I do it by hand, but if you wanna do it in the food processor, I'll talk about that a little bit at the end. So stay tuned and uh, just keep an eye on what's going on here. So as I get them all mixed in, what I'm looking for is one of two things, and what exactly I'm looking for is dependent on what kind of pie I'm making. So uh, when it gets to this point, I do generally switch to my fingertips just so I can sort of break up, especially any pieces of butter that stuck together. And what I'm looking for is either a mealy crust or a flaky crust. 
Now I know the word mealy doesn't have a very positive connotation. It doesn't sound like a very appetizing word, but it's just referring to the texture of the pie dough um, and how well it's going to withstand to certain fillings. So a mealy pie dough is really best for custard uh, style fillings or anything that's kind of a wet filling. And basically what that means is you just mix the butter in a little bit further so it doesn't, uh, it doesn't get as flaky in the oven. The flakiness happens when the moisture in the butter, the water that's present in butter, evaporates when it hits the hot oven. We always bake pies at a very hot temperature. So when that moisture evaporates, it creates steam and that pushes up the dough a little bit, creating flakiness and flaky layers. You want that for a fruit pie and, and certain other you know pie preparations. It's great for galettes especially to have a really flaky crust. But when you're working with a custard pie, something like pumpkin pie, chocolate cream pie, lemon meringue, those have a lot of moisture and it's easier to keep your bottom crust um, crisp if you go with a mealier dough. And all that means is you mix the butter in a little further. So um, I'm kind of dawdling here because I want it, I'm pretty much done and I want to show you guys what I'm talking about. For a flaky pie crust, you want your butter to be about this size when you're done mixing. And I always say about the size of walnut halves. And actually I'll put them here so that you can see even clearer on that surface rather than my hands. And with mealy dough, you want it a little smaller, closer to the size of uh, peas. And this is one way that um, my recipe varies quite a bit from a lot of recipes that you'll see. And even if you're using another recipe, you can use this guideline because you have to remember that pie dough continues to, uh, the butter continues to get flatter and smaller and smaller the more you're working with it. So when you roll out the pie dough, you're making that butter even smaller and smaller. So if you want ultimate flakiness, you need to leave it in really big pieces before you even start working with it. Whereas if you want uh, you know, a slightly crumblier texture, you wanna go with this. So they're both right, just depending on what you're doing. So I'm about at the point where I'm ready for a flaky pie crust, which is what I wanna make today. And it's gonna vary in size. They're not all gonna be the size of walnut halves. You're still gonna have some smaller pieces in there, but just in general, you wanna stop before you get things too far mixed. And now I'm going to make a well in the center right here where I'm going to add my water. Now the water amount is very tricky and this is the hardest part for most people because it's not precise and it kind of depends on a lot of things, even the temperature of your room on the day that you're making it. So I'm going to add water. I'm, I usually start with about three tablespoons into the center. And the way I mix it to prevent over mixing is I start by just kind of tossing the dough with this water and that makes it so the water is coating more evenly and not just getting stuck in one place in the bowl. And you can see I've done enough to kind of start to bring it together, but this is not, never gonna hold together. It's still way too dry. So then I make another, and you see I'm not kneading the dough at any point. The more you work with the dough, the more gluten you're uh, forming, the proteins found inside flour, those gluten strands are going to form. And so this tossing method helps kind of keep things working as minimally as possible until the last possible minute. And when you're really close and everything's almost together, that's when you can knead it a little bit to make sure it's evenly moistened and distributed. So I just need a little bit more now, I'm getting there. We're at the point now where you can see it does hold together, but it falls apart easily. We're gonna talk about that in just a second, but that is a very common problem with people making pie crusts at home. So this time, instead of making a well, I kind of drizzled it all over and I'm tossing, 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 and I'm getting really close. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn it out of my bowl and just knead it a few times. And you can still do this in the bowl if you don't have a good work surface or if you don't wanna make something unnecessarily dirty. Um, I just like to do it so I can make sure I've got it right. And this actually at this point still needs just a little bit more. 
So the way I handle it now at this point is I just dip my fingers in the water and splash some water onto it and knead it a few more times. This mean, helps make sure that I don't add too much and I don't add it all in one place. So this is perfect. The dough is evenly moistened and it's holding together, but you don't even see any visible cracks in the dough because it is hydrated. It's a properly hydrated dough. Now I'm just gonna rinse my hands really quick and then I'm gonna show you an, a not properly hydrated dough as well as an overly hydrated dough. So I already made, before we started filming, two more pie doughs. This first one is improperly hydrated. This dough is too dry and it looks very similar to this dough. The exception is you see visible cracks all around and you can even see some real dry spots where you almost can tell like this is flour that's been made wet and this is just flour that look, I can kind of, yep, see, I can just like smush it off like that. So that is an improperly hydrated dough. And that was um, at, when I was mixing my dough and I said, oh, we're almost there. That's about where we were. So you saw that I didn't need to add much more to make this dough properly hydrated. But the difference is when I go to roll this dough out, it's going to crack. It's going to be very difficult to work with. It's gonna be hard to handle. When I roll this dough out, it's going to be very smooth. It's not going to crack easily. And I'm gonna be able to kind of move it around as much as I want. This right here is an overly hydrated dough. And the main way you can see that is that it's actually sticky and tacky to the touch. Like you see all these little ripples in it from when I mixed it. And when I roll this one out, it's going to require me to use a ton of flour to keep it from sticking to the surface. It's going to stick to the surface. Look, it already is. It's stuck right there. This is that tackiness I was talking about. You can see it really clearly here from where I just peeled it up. So um, it's going to stick to everything, your hands, the surface, the rolling pin, and you're going to have to use so much flour when you roll it out that uh, it's going to toughen the dough because all that flour you're using, it's getting worked in and worked into the dough. Whereas with something like this, you're going to need to use very little flour, just enough to kind of lightly coat the surface and keep things from sticking. So um, sometimes people ask me then, if I ended up with one of these, can I save it? And the answer is yes and no. With this one right here, you can add a little more water and try to work it in. Just try to do it too soon. Don't like let your pie dough mix and don't wait until you try to roll it out to work it back together and, and moisten it again. So um, if you notice at this stage, okay, I think that's not quite wet enough, go ahead, add a little more water and you can bring it to the right texture. With this guy, if you've gotten to this point, you can still use this 100%. You, you're gonna have to use a lot of flour to make it happen but you can definitely use it. But uh, the downside of, of using this is that it's going to be tough, it's not going to be as tender, and it's not going to be as flaky, and it's probably gonna be difficult to work with. Um, you can try at this point adding a little more flour right into mixing so that you can use less when you um, roll it out, but it's gonna pretty much do the same thing. It's going to be a little bit tougher. Um, that said, it's not the end of the world. It's totally still edible. Nothing needs to be thrown out in any of these. They're all usable in one way or another. But um, just for the fun of it, I'm gonna show you kind of what they look like rolled out really quick. And then that's all for today. Get a little flower on my surface and grab my favorite rolling pin. So I'll start with our two dry dough. And I'm actually gonna brush some of the flour off for that because it's too dry. It doesn't need any flour really to roll it out. And when I roll this out, see it's happening already. See how this flaked off immediately? And then you try to push that back down, but every time you roll, it's gonna keep separating. This is what happens with very dry dough. And if it was even a little drier than this, that's when you would start seeing it cracking even in the center where you're working with it. So this is pretty typical 
of a too dry dough. When I go to roll out a little bit of this, you can also just tell in the cross section when I cut the too wet dough versus when I cut the too dry dough, look how smushy that is. It looks more like a biscuit than pie. And I'll need a decent amount of flour because it's even sticking to my hands right now. So coat it really well, coat my pin a little bit and roll it out and see how it's forming around my pin. That just means it's wet. It's sticking to my pin and good pie dough shouldn't do that. If, if that does happen, even if you've mixed the pie dough properly, just roll your flour, flour your rolling pin, flour your dough again and keep going and see now that it's got some more flour in it, it's rolling out just fine. And if anything, it looks pretty smooth and, I, and it almost looks like a really nice pie dough, but this pie dough versus the one that was properly hydrated is not going to turn out as nicely um, just because it's going to have all that extra flour in it and it's gonna to be tougher. So finally, last but not least, here's our little cross section of our properly mixed dough. You can actually almost see little layers going on, which is pretty cool. And then just a little flour down. And it's sticking there because I didn't flour my pin like I told y'all I should. And I'm just trying to use as little as possible to keep, to keep it from uh, getting too much flour worked in. And you can see it just rolls out really nicely. It's smooth, the edges are even smooth, it's not cracked anywhere, and I can continue to roll this. I got that wet pie dough left a little spot on my board that it stuck to for a moment, but. So I'm working with a pretty, um, you know, uneven piece of pie. I don't normally be working with the whole round, but you definitely get the idea. That's how much easier it is to roll out and work with that pie dough versus the drier stuff. So, so that's basically what we're talking about with pie dough. If you guys have any questions, make sure to leave them in the comments and we'll definitely do more pie videos um, about you know rolling it out, shaping it, all that kind of stuff. But I wanted to get you started with this one. It was a request from uh, an Instagram follower. So thanks so much for tuning in and I'll see you next time.